Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Real people doing real deals in real estate and no fake gurus allowed. We bring you the best and the most real real estate investors in the space. They'll be showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly of real estate investing. Like, share, subscribe, get notified. It's the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today, I have my great friend from Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is the second time around, Mr. David Olds. Dude, thank you so much for having me. No. Made, the, made the trip especially down here to be on the podcast. Thank you for coming in, man. I appreciate you. Uh, um, and and um, I'm looking forward for the second time around to see what's new for David, man. Like, on the first one, you told us who you were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good truth test, right? Put somebody on twice, see if they lied. Yeah. Fact check them. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, what's going on in today's world for David Olds? So today we're busy. Um, we have a little shakeup, a little shakeup in our, um, you know, in our company. We 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 reshuffled some things and relaunched in July of this year. So we actually took our million dollar wholesale business, collapsed it, and rebuilt it from the ground up. Um, so we we blew everything up and restarted. Brand new teams, everything. So that was an interesting experiment. You know, it's funny when it was happening, you know, you, it's, you're in the middle of a lot of turmoil, but I did think to myself, boy, I should be recording this and like, like documenting this process. Yeah. Like do a reality show type well, thing. Yeah. Because, you know, so many people think that doing a hundred or $150,000 a month in assignment fees is this unachievable thing. And it's really, no, not. it's not. It's, it's once you have a good process and systems, it's just a matter of plugging in, in the right people. I remember the first time I had 10 houses on their contract. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at, at the time I used to yeah. use Podio, right? And I'm looking at this thing on the screen and I'm like, I'm rich. Like, because now, because once you or get it, jet. you do it once and now you know you can do it twice. You know, yeah. you can start doing it multiple yeah. times, right? So it becomes the new normal. It becomes the new normal. So like today we have 16 properties under contract. It is the lowest we've had in the last year. Yeah, We've always had 40, 50, 60 um, one thing is we've gotten better at like underwriting a lot of the stuff that right. we get. Um, so we're saying no to a lot of JVs that, you know, come in and all that. Yeah. Um, but you, you're right. You hit it right in, right in the nail is that you, you built an operation mm -hmm. and then you redesign the operation, but literally you have to shut it down to kind of like rebuild it back up. You do. And that's tough because, you know, you're expecting that money that's coming in every month and it takes a, it's a big deep breath and a big leap of faith to, to do that. Um, you know, it's going to work, right? Yeah. You, you know, it's going to work. You know, your systems are good. You know, everything is good. All your tech is good, but you know, making that decision is, is still, it's still tough. You know, so we went, we went down July, August, two and a half months, really with no assignment fees coming mm -hmm. in. Um, and then we came back, we bounced back in November with 162. Right. So, so within, what is that, July, August, September, October, November, within five months, we went from zero to 162. So it's definitely, it can definitely be done. You just, you just have to make sure um, you, know, you have some good systems and a great team, which I'm lucky to have both. Yeah, you put, you put a great team together, by the way. I, yeah, I met, they are um, all stars, aren't they? I met all your all stars. Uh, not all of them. I, I didn't meet Nariza. Oh, no, she was, she was out. Wedding. Yeah. No. And, and a couple of the guys, uh, I, I don't think they were there that weekend, but everyone else I met, and I was very impressed. Um, you know, with the quality of the people that you have in there. Uh, they're all A players. Uh, actually, on our way back from Chattanooga, Caesar and I were talking, and we were comparing our team to your team, and oh, really? we're like, man, how did, how did David get all these people, right? And, and, and literally after we got back, we cleaned out the house. Like, really? we just cleaned it out. Like, let's say, look, guys, this, there's no – but sometimes, you know, like – you get attached to people, like, because they're good people, yeah. they're nice yeah. people, and you're like, well, I'm going to give them another chance, or, you know. Yeah. I'm guilty of that, for sure. Oh, yeah, we all are. By the time I fire somebody, like, you've messed, you've burned every possible bridge there is, and I've And they didn't sure. burn any bridges. It's just that they weren't the people for it. You know, that was it, you know. Uh, and and But one of the triggers for me to kind of, like, take that route was to do that. Like, go to your, see you, how you rebuild so fast. And I was like, you know what? 
man, Caesar, we got to go clean the house. And exactly what that's exactly what we did, right? We came in and we readjusted and we left in great terms with the people that were here, but they're, they're no longer uh, working with us. Um, but seeing how you went and shut down, well, you didn't shut it down, but you sort of like deflated the operation. Yeah, and, and really what happened was we were in the same spot. Probably we were in a worse spot maybe than you were. A lot of great people that were there. We had a staff of 16 or 17 at one time, uh, but just not the right type of people in the right jobs. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, not everybody should be An acquisition. In, in our business, in, whole, yeah, in wholesaling, you know, acquisitions people are different from dispositions people. Um, you know, and they've got to have the right personality. And that's one thing I learned from Nick Perry, our friend, um, you know, doing hiring is, you know, you can never tell, right? When you're, when you're, whether you're interviewing a tenant for a rental or you're hiring somebody, people are always on their best behavior, right? They yeah. always come in, they sit down, it's, yeah, Mr. David, whatever, I'm going to be the greatest tenant, employee, whatever you've ever had. And you never know, right? But you, there are some predictive things you can do, give them some personality tests. And hopefully that will help weed out some of the wrong or at least put them on the right seat right yeah, um yeah, yeah. you know we for me i didn't have the wrong uh, i didn't have bad people i just had i guess hungry the hunger level wasn't there and exactly. you know and i made a decision based on my situation i said you know what guys i'm not where i'm supposed to be right now like, i'm not hitting my kpis i'm not hitting my goals and it's because you guys are not hitting your kpis and you're not hitting your goals I can't have you on my team if you're not making any money. Like, I, it makes no sense for me. Like, I don't even want to see you around because how do I brag about you being on my team if you're not making money? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And here, but now, the difference in between you and I is that you pay salary. I do. I, I do. don't. Yeah. And how yeah. can I let somebody starve for two or three months, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, no, man, you just you just have to go. So, um and that was a big thing. So when so when I relaunched the company, and again, you know, the people that left, not bad people, just not the right people. So I did, I talked to you and, and some other friends of ours. And um, one thing that, that I spent some time doing is I, I called all, all the bigger wholesalers. Yeah. There aren't a ton of them, but the run operations our size. And I said, well, you know, so how are you doing this? How are you doing a couple of these different things? But the one question that I asked that I think that was, it was really, in hindsight, it's pretty smart and powerful was, you know, I would call... Nick Perry, Corey Geary, you know, Charles and Michael, you, hey, what is the thing, what's what's going great in your business, um, you know, all the, all the things that are going well, but if even though you're doing great, what's if you could go back in time and undo or change something, what would that be? Because right? even if you're doing great and you've got great teams, we're always, yeah. everybody's like, geez, I would have not done this, right? Yeah. So I tried to sort of crowdsource rebuilding my company, um, but you're right. So, so the thought process behind having commission only people is you you're hoping you're going to get hungry people yeah because that's how they live right that that's their only income for me i'm a little different i'm a, probably a little bit softer and i know that you know from our kpis it's 41 and a half days from contract to close so that's a long time to ask somebody to wait so for me i found a middle ground of we we give them a really small base salary which if you can live on 500 dollars a week you're not the person for us um right but then then we have a nice incentive structure um with the commission. So that, right. that's how I did it. But again, everybody's got to, I tell everybody, run your own business. We all are different. We all, we're in different markets. So $500 is great for me. $500 in LA is probably not going to work. You know? No, so, never. Like you couldn't even pay rent with that. Like, cause. Uh, yeah. So everybody's got to, got to do it themselves. Um, but what was important for me when we relaunched was that everybody on our team is, is believes in the vision and where, where at least I, Today, think that we're taking the company, right? Because that always changes. But everybody believes in the longevity of what we're doing. Uh, we, we always promote from within. We don't bring people from the outside and put them in any management position. But but everybody, I mean, I like to think of like soldiers, right? We're kind of all walk, marching together in lockstep. Everybody understands what the end goal is. The end goal is to cash checks, yeah. right? So everybody in our company, um, you know, understands that, that their job is to get, get a contract over the right? Whether you're the, the janitor person, you're the, um, the admin person, whether, you know, whatever it is, like everybody works together. So that was, that was an important culture shift for us to have. And, uh, and because of that, everybody gets paid some commission. Even my hourly people that are administrative get 1%. Yeah. 
Mm. Right. Because I want everybody to benefit when the team wins. Right. right? So that's good. Know. That that's uh um uh, I have something similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, which is something I'm I'm kind of redesigning right now as we speak because um, as you know, I opened an office in Miami for acquisitions, and I had my brother Paul and Eddie over there, uh, who are killers, by the way, doing you know negotiating properties over the phone. Yeah. They learned that, and now they're like superstars, right? Right. But um, that brought a whole s- set of different challenges. Uh, I'm not around there too much. Uh, I try to go there as much as I can, but I. It, Time lately has been very scarce on my end, and and one of the things that 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 I that's going very well for us is our virtual team, like the yeah. the guys down in South America, which by the way you use. I do some I, of those I, guys. I pretty not anti, but I just wasn't on board with the virtual plan. So yeah. one of the things when we relaunched again, we had a lot of conversations, and I, I needed to relaunch fast. Right, speed was was very important to me. I didn't want to take two years to get back to, you know, to doing a million dollars a year. And uh, so, yeah, we, we have a uh, two, just hired a third VA. Yeah. Um, so that's new for us and they're, they're doing great. Um, they're great people. They're it's great. just, you just got to learn how to manage them. Cause that's it. Sometimes yeah. like even I make the mistake of not calling them, not yeah. doing zoom calls with them, maybe not answering questions that they may have. And uh, I told Caesar today, I said, I, I walked by his office and he had the Zoom open with three girls, which are our newest Dispo girls. And I said, hey, man, send me the invite so I can talk to them for a little bit. And yeah. and honestly, I just, I didn't know what to say either. Like, I was just talking to them and I'm like, okay, what else do I tell them? Because, you know, I don't know this, these girls, but, uh, you know, I knew one of them, Mariana, which is, she's a rock star in our team. Uh, she keeps climbing and climbing. Right. But, um but one thing that I, I, you know, I looked at was because the acquisitions in Miami is working. So it's not that it's not working. Yeah. It's just that my brother and Eddie has, they want to do their own thing. Gotcha. Um, they still want to collaborate with me, but I'm like, okay, so how do I keep that office open on, on, a, on a new structure or whatever? It makes no sense. So they want to go do wholesaling on their own? Yes, but they're doing it already. Okay. So it was from day one. They, they were like... Hey, this is what we want to do this together, and, and I'm like, perfect, guys, don't worry, because I believe in collaboration, right? 100%. So, so I set up an office. Now they did acquisitions for us, or they they still do mm-hmm. acquisitions for us, uh, but they do their own lead generation. Now the the agreement was is that they JV all the deals with us gotcha. until they build a disposition. So they build their team gradually, right? But it's it's crazy how. Like and now that I'm comparing like you against them, right? Uh, they're brand new, so they have no knowledge in real estate whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It took them three months to get their first deal cashed, mm-hmm. which is normal. Like in my opinion, ninety days is kind of like the cycle for. It is in today's market. Refis right. are going crazy. You know, everybody's understaffed. Right. So and, and not even so much your title company, um, but they can't get the. Under, under well, the they, they it took the them. Hold on, it, it took them ninety days from not knowing anything. That's pretty good. So, they started. In reality, my brother made the decision to do real estate in May at our first mastermind here in Houston, right. where you were. Yeah, yeah. He made the decision that day, right? So, May, he June. Around and said, "If all these idiots are doing it, I could definitely do this, right?" Exactly. He's like, "Man, they're they're <laughs> these like guys aren't that smart. They are not that smart, right?" So, <laughs> so it, it was June, July. August, he was kind of like sidetracked. Yeah. Like, you know, he was busy with his studio and, you know, getting his insurance thing going, which is great for him because he makes residual income on it. Yeah. And he was doing Sean Terry videos. Like, I told him, man, you got to go watch those yeah, Sean Terry videos. Video, yeah. yeah. I'll go watch those videos because I don't have time to build your, 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 like, to explain to you what an ARV is and, and the, the basic. Get some foundational. Wholesaling 101, right? So go learn that from Sean, then I'll help you with the rest. So he literally started marketing uh, in August. Okay. August, September, October, he starts locking up deals. Nice. And, and in October, uh, no, November, he cashed his first check. Um, and so, you know, a newbie, he can take him five months you know, two years, I mean, two years to get their yeah. first deal. They they did fairly well actually to do that fast. Um, but you shut down a business and you restarted it, and within three months, boom, one hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars in assignments right away, right? July, August, September, 
Yeah. Then, yeah, on the fifth month. On the yeah. fifth month. Yeah. Now you you kind of like got back on track. So, um, so when I when I looked at my operation, when I looked at your operation, I said, okay, was David? David is good at this, and, th- and th- which we're gonna get into into it in a minute on yeah. on on these positions, which I learned a ton, by the way. Uh, and I and I know I'm good at this post, by the way. Uh, but when I went to Davies, I was like, "Ooh, that's a trick I didn't know. That's another one I didn't know." Like I started, I we took a lot of notes. Yeah. Um, and so when I looked at what what is the best thing going on for me right now, and it was my my Venezuelan team. Yeah. And I was like, "Man, how come I haven't expanded that? Like, why why is it I keep focusing here in Houston and I keep focusing in Miami?" Yeah. Instead of focusing on those guys over there that are actually people that are hungry, they want the opportunity, and they're cheap. I wouldn't call them cheap, cheaper, but they do. They are relative, relatively cheaper than people here. Right. Okay, why is that? Because their cost of living is lower. Yeah. So even so, my, my, I'll give you an example. So let's pick one of your girls. Base salary two thousand dollars a month yeah. plus commissions, right? I have a girl that I just hired. You met her. I won't say her name here, but um, just, I mean, she was hired, the first dispo person that we hired, and I calculated the other day she's going to make over $80,000. Wow. Well, based on, I mean, I, her last check, and I just annualized it out. First year. So, but she needs to spend, now, if she's living on her own, she lives by herself, yeah. I don't know, an apartment, maybe renting a house may cost 1000 bucks a month in, in Chattanooga, if that, uh, Right, maybe you're in a good area or whatever. So let's say she's living lavishly and she's paying fifteen hundred. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And she's got we a, have a pretty good Chattanooga for fifteen hundred. Exactly. But I know where you're going. Right now she's got a car payment that's five hundred bucks or four hundred dollars or whatever, um, which five hundred dollars is the new three two hundred fifty dollars oh, from my times. You know. Yeah. This is like I remember, I remember paying. My first payment was two fifty, and I thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're paying 500 bucks, and now you're at 2,000 bucks. So base salary covers vehicle and apartment, uh, or living or whatever, and then food and all that comes from commissions. And but I pay somebody in Venezuela two grand, dude. They're they're living large. Yeah, large. So comparatively, it's the same money for them. So it is the same money, but they their cost of living is so much lower right. that you know. In my opinion, they're they're gonna be staying longer yeah. in that position. If you know, and 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 don't get me wrong, if they make ten k, hey, so be it. You know, like you make ten k. Now they're like some of the wealthiest persons, or or at least on income coming in from in the country. And it's an opportunity that they don't have any place. It's an opportunity that they don't have any place else, and they can stay in their country where because most of the people that work with us. They don't want to leave. They're like, hey, my parents are here. My sister is here, you know, whatever. And we understand the situation in the country is tough. Sure. But we don't. We just don't want to leave. And some of them can't leave. You know, they don't have a visa or whatever or somebody somewhere else to, to take them. But that was my comparison is that I analyzed my three different operations. And I, I went and I said, okay, the best one is this one. This one runs like on autopilot. Like that one is like. And it's been like that for at least two or three years. Like, very little attention from me because luckily I have Carlos and Carla, which we, we work with. No, I don't yeah. want to say when I say we. No, I you you work with girls, them. Yeah, right? yeah, you, Are there the people on my yeah. Team? MPL is working with them, right? So, <laughs> right. So, yeah. um, you guys are working with these guys, but they're 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 self sufficient. I don't have to like. I just gotta tell them, hey, this is, needs to get done, and they'll go figure it out, right? Um. I, I kind of like overlooked that, like, because I had this thing about VAs as well. Like, oh, VAs, I don't know. I don't even like the term VA, yeah, yeah. by the way. You know, it's like virtual assistant. I don't know if these guys are really virtual, you know? Yeah, so for me, well, and I mean, now we're all virtual, right? That was the right. only good thing that came out of COVID was. But, uh, yeah, for me, I always had this, and I knew it was wrong, but you just, in your head, like, oh, they're not going to be as good as somebody here. But these are smart people. Dude, I thought College the same. Degrees, motivated. Yeah. I mean, they, if you were to give them personality tests, they're as motivated as anybody. I thought the same thing. Yeah. I got to have somebody here because they're hungry. They got to pay bills here. Man, I was wrong. I, I proved myself wrong with the last two people that we had to let go. Yeah. It's because they live here, but they they didn't have that drive. And I was like, 
if they don't have the drive because they got bills or they got goals or whatever, and 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 maybe they if they watch this, and by the way, guys, this is not personal, but I I just haven't been able to find at least in Houston, okay, yeah. people that have that drive and yeah, um, and do the the right take the right steps to 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 make it happen, right? Um, this is the difference in between those guys is that yeah. I'm finding more people with drive. And with passion, because even I was talking on a call this morning with Terrence, right? Terrence has got a, one of our uh, of our VAs. And he was like, man, you think I can train this guy on this? And I, and I was like, dude, you can They're whatever smart. you want. They're smart as hell, dude. Like, it, it, don't see your VA as a VA like most people see it in our business. See them as like your executive assistant, or 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 like of or like your possible COO, or or an acquisitions man. Like I'm seeing them like, hey, I, I can completely run a team over there with these talents, right? Yeah. And I'm moving that way. We were talking little out, by little. We were out in the, in the office here talking about it a little bit ago, and it's and it's in my head. So so I've thought a lot about the VA thing because you know even. My brother, I, I love him to death. You know, 10 years ago, you know, Thomas Morgan, look him up. But uh, he would always say, oh, we need to do VAs. I'm like, ah, I don't want to do VAs. I don't want to train them because it's more work. And I think, here's the thing. If I bring somebody in my office, I don't have to do as good a job maybe training them because we can do it as we go. I can do a minute or two, and then I can leave a minute or two. And with a VA, you've actually got to have a good process, right? You've got yeah. to spend the time up front training them. And, you know, it's sort of like if you were in high school and you could wrestle, like the strong kid could just win because he could muscle, muscle his way through, yeah. where, where the skinnier kid had to have technique. Well, with a VA, you have to have technique. You have to have a system in place. You have to do a little bit of training where if someone's in your office, they sort of get some of it through osmosis, right? Yes, you get it through through association, yeah. being in the same area, picking up things that you say or whatever. But um, I guess I developed a system to train these guys. Yeah just not even knowing that I did, right? Because eventually, once we hired the first people that, that started, like, I, I think the first time we st I started using, like, purposely VAs for, for texting yeah. was, like, a year and a half ago. And I, I told Carlos, hey, hire somebody, show them how to use the platform, and and then when a lead comes in, you send it to us. Yeah. Right? So they were just lead generating. So for the most part, I've been using the whole team just for lead generation, but not for negotiating. Then I took it a step forward. I was like, hey, man, why don't we ask more questions through texting? Like, ask them how many bedrooms, bathrooms, you know, give me conditions on the property, things of that nature. That way, when we call them, we got more info. Yeah, the only reason we don't do that is because I think it stifles the conversation a little bit when our acquisitions person picks up the call. Because you know, what we ask, we just ask, you know, are you the owner? Are you motivated? Do you want to sell soon? So that when I call you back, hey, Ricardo, you talk to uh, Melissa, you know, yeah, whatever. Uh, I, I can't. We have two names. I can't Luis, remember. you got one no, of them. Louis, but we use a generic name. We have them text under a generic name. Brittany. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah. So you were talking to Brittany. Yeah, tell me a little bit about the house. And by asking those questions, it helps us to jump in and help build rapport a little bit. So that's the only reason we don't ask those things. With the way this is what we do. Is, so yeah. we 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 go ask. We send those, and I call. Hey, man, this is Ricardo. Um, and thank you so much for getting on a call with me. Uh, I do see that you already provided some information to yeah. Brittany. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if we recap a little bit? Yeah. Is yeah, it up? Sometimes you'll get, oh, I already told them that. Yes. Yeah. But do, I say, do you, we say, yeah, do you mind if we recap a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're going to give you permission, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it a four bedroom, three bathroom? You know, no, it's a two and a half bathroom. Okay. Perfect. Man, I'm glad. You see, I'm glad I call you and I yeah, ask this yeah. question. So, that's how we start building the rapport. So, yeah. so it's more of an approach thing. Yeah. Um, but now we got more ammo to go mm -hmm. and and deal with the seller, right? Yeah. Um, and then when we started getting all this information, I was like, man, what if we take it a step further and now have these same guys call the the sellers? I haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. I'm working on that. Usually, it's accent is the issue. Yeah. So this is how Charles fixed it with our friend Manny Cash. Mm -hmm. So Manny Cash, by the way, shout out to Charles Hernandez uh, 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 and Manny Cash and and, uh, and Michael Yanis from HBHS and the whole HBHS family. There are freaking 50 of them over there in that office. Yeah, they just launched HBHS Association, which yeah. is going to be awesome. And the Alliance. And Alliance, all, Alliance. Yeah, yes, the Alliance. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Um, so Manny comes to work with HBHS. He's an immigrant from Venezuela. Spoke like no English. Spoke very little English with a very thick accent, right? And he went months cold calling. I mean, this is brutal too. Like, yeah. hey, put the guy with the worst accent yeah. to cold call, right? Yeah. So he's going months cold calling and nothing, no traction. And he's getting frustrated. He doesn't have any money. You know, he's freaking yeah. like trying to like. like you. I mean, sink or swim. Right, sink, sink, or, sink or swim, right? And um, and Charles goes one day and he's like, Manny, why are you having such a tough time? And and, and this is why I love Charles. So, and this guy is so freaking smart. Manny goes, man, you know, I'm having these conversations. And Charles goes, let's listen to one of them. And as soon as they start to, he noticed that Manny was afraid of speaking because of the way his accent and, you know, not dominating the, the English language. And he says, Manny, why don't you take a different approach? When you call the seller, just tell them that you are a Venezuelan real estate investor. <laughs> and you're looking to buy properties here in the U.S. Yeah. And Manny looks at it like, huh. So by addressing the elephant in the room up front, which is the accent, yeah. done. Yeah. And, now, and now he's a freaking killer. Yeah. He was at the Closer's, Closer's Olympics competing top, to be top five guy, top five guy right? Yeah. With a thick accent. Yeah. So the accent thing to me no longer like. That's an interesting way to approach it. It doesn't, it no longer like. See people, that's the stuff you get out of listening to these podcasts. Yeah. People are like, why should I do that? That's something I'll go back to Chattanooga with. And that's Dude, check it. this out. So I go to an event in Washington, D.C., right? Mm -hmm. And you probably seen this guy at our mastermind in Miami. By the way, shout out to Jackson, okay? Jackson speaks no English, like very little English. I met him uh, in D.C., and a uh, very humble guy. He's from Mexico. He lives in, um, um, oh, my God, I forgot the... Uh, Sioux Falls, but I forgot what that is. Uh, Falls, North Dakota? In North Dakota. He lives in North Dakota. Doesn't speak English in Sioux No, oh, no, no, no. So he, you know, yeah. I mean, he ended up there one way or another, but he's working, like, where he works, he doesn't need to speak right. English, right. you know? So he and he went to the mastermind, dude. He, was, he even got on the yacht, like, at the mastermind. So go figure. But this guy doesn't do a lot of deals. Like, he's trying to learn, but he's got drive and hustle. Like, you have no idea. So, um, I do have a community in Spanish that yeah. I that I yeah. teach people. Right, he comes through there, and he's asking me all these questions, and I'm like, "Hey, man, so tell me more." And this is after the mastermind, like you know, after he went on the yacht with us and all. How many deals have you done? And he's like, "Well, really, I've only done like almost one deal," you know. And yeah. and I was like, "What do you mean, dude?" He said, like, "Well, I have this property under contract, and then he's got two more that he's working with." And I'm thinking, like, how the hell do you get that property on the contract when you speak no English? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you negotiate it? So I start asking all these questions. He said, Ricardo, oh, and he calls, call, call calls. You know how he call calls? <laughs> he has a Google Translator thing on his phone when he's making these calls. So he's literally reading on his phone. So it'd be like me reading Spanish, right? How yeah, like you call calling, calling in Spanish. Como estas? But tell me that's somebody that wants to do this shit. That's a guy that's going to make a million dollars. Oh, he, Guaranteed there, there's no, all day long. There's, dude, we got a property on the contract with him right now. He's selling it and, he, and he's going to make like 10 grand. Yeah, and, and I was like, wow. And then he's like, okay. So, cause he brings us the contract. Yeah. Now I, I kind of like guiding him a little bit on title company and this and that. Lo, go to a local guy. And uh, he goes, um, can you help him on title companies? Like help me. Absolutely. So, so this is, this is one over there locally, right? So <laughs> took you a second, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, he goes in there and then he goes, Hey man, uh, by the way, I know this is not a done deal yet. So we, we can't really count the eggs before they hatch, uh, the chicken before the eggs hatch or whatever. How can I invest my assignment more effectively on marketing this guy is already thinking like, man, I'm not going to go spend that money on whatever, on a new truck or clothes. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Jackson, let's go cash the check first. Once you have check post on your, on your account, let's talk about the next step, which yeah. is systems and yeah. automations, maybe a texting platform or a CRM, whatever. And he's like, consider it done. Just let's, let's reinvest my money. I really want to grow. 
So this is somebody that speaks no English. He manages to go to these events where like he was sitting throughout the whole event looking at every speaker. You think he understood? You know what he was doing? He had a Google Translate thing on his hand reading while you guys were yeah. speaking on from stage. I, I use it when I go to Europe. It works great. Yeah, it works great. So he has the drive. Well, that's the people I'm looking for. Yeah. And luckily for me, I find them down there in Venezuela so because I grew up over there and I have some sort of a network yeah. Yeah. still that's somehow in there. But... But that's why I decided to span yeah. that team um, as opposed to grow here. Actually, I probably will be shutting down this office in 2023. Really? Yeah, we'll move the podcast room to a smaller office. I was thinking if you you told me you were going to keep it to three or four people, like this is a big office. No, this is a big office. Like I don't like not as nearly as big as you are. Like I think your office will be like your office to me is 98% perfect, 100% perfect if you had a shower. <laughs> because you got so much space in there. It's great. We're filling it up. You can house. build a gym. Literally, you have space to build you, a gym. Uh, when I'm talking to you, I have my my uh, ear pods on and I'm I'm walking. I'm yeah, you going, pace, you pace around the, oh, the can, room. There's yeah. like different routes you can take. Yeah, yeah. No, we, it's a fantastic office. I do oh, I love it. I that. do love that office. Dude, I think you can build a badass gym. Yeah. If I were you, I'll talk to the landlord and say, hey man, can you build me a shower here? Like, <laughs> Like literally, I thought about, but I have no water on this side of the building. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I do had a shower, I'd never go home. My wife would get mad, and Fat Petunia would be upset. So. No, nah, but you used to exercise, yeah, and you yeah. know, hey, you guys, oh, you want to go blow some steam? There's the weights over there. Yeah, like Q has a. Uh, 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 Shoot, yeah. Uh, when he uh, said he was getting a new office, I'm like, dude, you got to move all those weights. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. I haven't visited his office yet. Yeah. I'm, uh, I, I got to put him on the podcast as well. But shout out to Q, yeah, man, um, in San Antonio. But anyhow, so. So you shut down the business, rebuild it back up. Rebuilt it up. You're doing well again. Um, yeah, big investment. I mean, you know, we invested $70,000 to relaunch, right? To relaunch. To, re to relaunch it really fast. Right. right? Um, so I tell everybody, there's, you know, you have time or money. And when I started the first time, I had no money. Like, right. We had nothing. Yeah. Like, we, we, had, we had drive. Um, we, we were too dumb to quit, uh, but we had no money, so we really bootstrapped it up. This time, relaunching was a little bit different. I was able to sell one of the properties that I have. Um, and I Good had, thing about being a real estate investor, right? So there's always properties to liquidate. Yeah. I, my property manager today was trying to get me to sell one that she's turning. But, uh, yeah, so we, we had money to, you know, to throw in and, and invest really fast in the company. Um, but, yeah, you, you can definitely relaunch. You, you can do this business fast, right? It's time compression. One thing, I was having dinner with Dan Merrill years and years ago, and he talked about you know, everybody has great ideas. Everybody has brilliant business ideas, but just you either don't do it or you take so long to implement those things that it becomes stale or you forget or it doesn't happen. So right. speed of implementation is very important for us. Like, I will make notes from this weekend. You know, We're here for a, special, a couple special events, yeah. and I will go home, and they will be implemented by the end of the week. Yeah, we, I, I do the same thing. Dude. I, I, I just take notes now, and, and like I, I came back from your event and literally just – See, and, and you know, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's one of those things, right? Because I've seen you rebuild, and 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 I've seen you how you know, and not I'm not rebuilding because I mm -hmm. there's a difference. You rebuilt, yeah, we torched it, you torched it. it. I, yeah. I, I got leads coming in right now. Yeah. I'm just now like, okay, I get I gotta route these leads to here and there, and we gotta make sure that what we had going on with the other guys is still intact, and those guys are still working on whatever they're supposed to be working. But now, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and train acquisitions guys down in South America that way they can do all the acquisitions for us. Yeah. And, um, yeah, things fall through the cracks every time you do that. Like, response rate, response time is not as fast as yeah. you expected if, if you have it locally um, while you're retooling the, the whole system. But, um, you know, you know, going to your event, which I want to touch on next, uh, Dispo Exposed. Uh, great event, by the way. Um, Appreciate that. Two day, it was two, two and, and a half, half days, days yeah. almost three days, honestly, because you started on Friday night, yeah. Friday afternoon. Yeah, you were traveling. I was traveling. I got there a little late. And then Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday, Saturday was late Sunday, too. And we were a little late on Sunday. But you literally broke down um, the whole dispositions process on how you do it. Um, contracts, uh, like we're using your contracts now. Nice. Um, it's easier, isn't it? Well, I wasn't too far from you. Oh, really? 
we just adopted like, hey, yo, he put this here. You know what? That's a great idea. Let's put that there. There's or a lot of stuff packed into that contract. Yeah. So we, but my my contracts were very similar. Uh, the only one that wasn't similar was the assignment of contract because you don't do assignments, I do. You don't have to. And do and now we're we're doing assignments on stuff that we're double uh, signing, mm -hmm. like when it's a double assignment or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but we on do that with a JV agreement. Right, we can do that with a JV agreement. There's right. Different again, million ways to do that. Different ways to skin the cat. Sure. Uh, but yeah, we adopted your contracts. Uh, we adopted. Um, a lot of the things that your girls are doing now, the Dispo team, mm -hmm. how they're doing it. Um, we're definitely starting to use Easy REI closings now, which we'll be talking to Heather uh, later on, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a new company that David just launched um, for transactional coordinating, guys. So I will be putting a link on the description down below on this video and the next video with Heather. She will be talking mostly on, she on, can talk on that. Real nuts. I, like, it was my idea, but, yeah. but she's, the, she's, the, she's, she's the runner. She's, she's the captain she's of the that brains, ship. Right? Yeah, yeah, she's the captain of that ship. On that ship, uh, David is the admiral. He sits, on, <laughs> he sits in, in I land. I through one today. Girls, how are yeah. you doing? Yeah. Got the heat up awful high over here, but everybody doing good. What do you need? But in a nutshell, David, sure. can you break down what Dispo Exposed is all about? Sure, sure. Um, so... So let me start with this. So for a long time, I handled just the dispositions um, when I had a partner. So um, even the two partners I had before that, I, I really handled dispositions. And so when I started wholesaling, wholesaling, it was 2009, different time, right? You're old enough to remember that. I don't know if you were investing then. Yeah, it was. But, okay. um, so back then, very easy to get a house under contract, right? world is ending. Tom Brokaw on the nightly news every night is telling about how we don't know if the stock market is going to open tomorrow. So people are giving houses away, right? The biggest mistake I made in my life was not buying 300 more than I bought. Yeah. So, but anyways, very easy to get properties, incredibly difficult to get buyers, right? It was the flip flop of where we're at right now in 2020 and 2021. So um, you had to get really good at going out and finding buyers. And I've always approached it from a systems way systems process process system. anyways a system where similar to how we we go out and we find um, our sellers right so we approach dispositions the same way and uh you know over the years we, we've developed some great processes and one of them you know I, when i was building my dispositions team i would uh, i would have a couple people in there a couple girls in, in the beginning and we'd be doing deal you know deal reviews you know hey where are we at with this deal and what have we done and it would be so frustrating i would say my god there's 10 things we're supposed to be doing on every deal. And we're doing six and never the same six, right? Because we're all over the map because we didn't have a good, a good system and processes and KPIs and things. So, but anyways, because I spent so much time doing Dispo, I'm always out there researching, right? Like whatever you're passionate about in life, you're always online looking for better ways to do it. And there was never any information. There's not, there's no course out there for dispositions. Um, it's always that last chapter in somebody's acquisitions course. Oh, if you get a good deal, it'll sell. Oh, a bunch of crap. Right? If I have a good contract sitting here on the desk, if I don't go out there and market it and understand how to market it, it's not going to sell. And maybe it'll sell, but did I get the most money for it? Right? So, so because of that, you know, that, that's how I spent so much time focusing on um, dispositions. And I came from a background of marketing, retail marketing too. So, so I at least had that as a baseline to work with. Um, so again, because I ran dispositions for so long, even when I had other people doing acquisitions, um, you know, I would get these contracts over and I'd be like, well, this is a piece of crap. We can't sell this. This isn't priced correctly. What are we, like, what are we supposed to do with this property, right? Because in marketing on disposition side, you're selling a story, right? You're selling, you have to tell somebody, you know, how, here's how you can make money with this. Mm -hmm. And I would get some of these deals and I'd be like, like, this doesn't even make any sense. So one thing when we relaunched our company is everybody in our company understands what the end is, right? What is the end goal? We're going to cash a check. Okay. Again, this is Forrest Gump dumb here, what we're going to talk about. But so we're going to cash a check. Okay, fantastic. Well, really, who writes us that check? It's a cash buyer, right? Everybody's like, duh, everybody, we get that, right? But I can't tell you how many teams I've gone, and I train a lot of big teams in the country for some of the biggest wholesalers. I help train their dispositions team, and I'll talk to their acquisitions people. And they're like, oh, I don't know who's going to buy this. I was just told get 70% of ARV minus repairs. And I'm like, okay. So we want to, we, we need to cash checks. Everybody in our company understands that's our lifeblood. We're, we're all small entrepreneurs. We're small businesses. We're not backed by a fortune 500 billionaire. So great. We're going to cash checks. We have cash buyers, right? Well, what do cash buyers want? Like if your acquisitions and marketing people don't understand that, 
you're going to have a problem, right? Because what comes out the bottom of the funnel is what goes in the top. Mm -hmm. So they want functional properties that they can make money on. Okay, fantastic. Again, still stupid, stupid, simple. And do, does your acquisitions people understand that there are different type of investors that are basically landlords and rehabbers. So when they're looking at a property on the acquisition side, okay, what can somebody do with this? How would how do I need to price this? Because when we sell it, how do I have to get this at, how can I get this at a number that's going to make sense so that the end buyer, so this is make sense to our end buyer and then he can do something with it and make money on it, right? So, so we approach everything, every single person we approach uh, their training with, what is the end in mind, right? And because of that, all of our people are paid a commission, the same commission acquisitions and dispositions because I want them all working together and understanding that these properties that we're putting under, or these, you know, properties, houses, whatever, that we're putting under contract, they have to be, it has to be a sellable contract. Just because you put something on a contract doesn't mean it. Yeah, it's right. not going to stick. Like, no, right? You know. Like, how many of we've all had boards of contracts where, like, well, that was worthless, crossed, we run out of time on this one, nobody wants this one, this one's too rural, right? So I say all that to say, you know, it's very important that my person in marketing understands that it's really hard to sell a property in Anderson, Alabama, where there's 250 people. Yeah. Right? What am I going to do, sell to the other 249 people Dude. in town? Right? So, so they understand – Marketing has to understand. I don't want to. I don't want to do nationwide PBC because I'm going to get stuff in these podunk towns. Which again, if that's your strategy, that's cool. Do that. I want to. I want to fish in a stocked pond. Yeah. Right. I don't want to fish in the pond where I might catch a frog. Right. I want to be in the place where there's 300 rainbow trout. Right. So all of our marketing is geared towards areas where there's going to be a lot of cash buyers. So we reverse engineer our entire process. And to get back to what what is Dispo Exposed, that's what it is. Right. We're, we're very clear in how we train our, our, our team members, how we train my students, and how we train everybody who comes to the live events. Here's where we're going. Because if we don't understand where we're going, you're going you're gonna to mess up at the beginning, right? Because, right. man, I'm lazy. Like, I'm 50 years old. I don't want to be... I don't want to be working any harder than I have to, right? You're you know, not lazy, dude. I call you at 8 o'clock uh, in the evening. I know where you are. It's in yeah, the office. Uh, but, uh, but I want to I want you, to you, you just want simple life. Uh, simple, I want simple and I want simple. Life, simple. Right? That's is different. Yeah, uh, but you're low, not lazy by any means. I want low-hanging <laughs> fruit. I want my team to be successful, right? Um, so, anyways, we want to put the right the right types of properties in the top of the funnel. I want when it, when those deals come in, whether it's SMS or PPC, I want my acquisitions people to be getting the best leads. I want them to understand how dispositions is going to sell it. And we have meetings, right? We'll, we'll go, we go over more of the bad deals than the good deals, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, why did this one go wrong? Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, cool. Now we learn and now we know, right? right. So anyways, a lot of, a lot of communication back and forth between teams, but what is the end? Let's put let's put good stuff in the top of the funnel so the good stuff comes out, and and that's what speeds up our 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 cycle from contract to close. That's good, man. That was a long explanation. I don't know if that answered any. No, it, but, it completely um, answers, but it's really the whole process on these positions on how you do it. Uh, aside from investor lift, which uh, you and I used, uh, that's amazing. but uh, uh, you know, you even go into details on how to pull a list of cash buyers, where to pull the list for, for the cash buyers, you know. That hedge fund thing. The hedge fund, you know, yeah, all that just, stuff. The room just went quiet, didn't yeah, it? There was a, there was a lot of yeah. nuggets in there that you dropped on that weekend that, that will make a lot of people a lot of money. That's a fact. But uh, anyhow, thank you for, so much for uh, doing a second repeat, David. No, I feel like we, there's so much more we could talk about. Yeah, that's why I don't. I want to stop it right now because <laughs> I want to do a number three later on. Yeah. Uh, probably next year when we do the the – Attend growth May 27, 28, 2022, man. You got to write down that that uh at the date. That's the next event we're doing. Uh David is actually a sponsor in that event. Yeah, uh, he's wow. been a sponsor and a speaker on the last two. And um we are looking forward to get that one launched January 1st. You're going to see a website with a bunch of ads running around. So awesome. Attend the growth, that's the new name. Uh, we're going to put a link down below for Dispo Expose if you want to go uh, get uh, David's uh, videos and, and, and learn his uh, yeah. dispositions way of doing things. Uh, or if you want to attend his office, he's got a mastermind that he does there. Uh, and the next one is going to be probably in the first quarter of 2022. Yeah, we're doing – we have a, Dispo Exposes our live event. Um, DispoREI.com is, is our coaching program. We, we have a mastermind and coaching program. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a uh, um, another – the other thing that I'm – really kind of known for two things one is is the dispositions we right. really fine-tune that so that you can sell more deals and sell them for higher assignment fees but the other one is um, for our owner finance right, right. we've we've taken owner financing down to a kindergarten level where you can bolt that right onto your 
That's how I buy all my properties, by the way. Like every single one of them, like over five million dollar portfolio, yeah. uh, with maybe six thousand dollars invested on the front side. Um, so we're gonna do an event in January um, in Chattanooga. It'll be probably a two day event. Um, how to owner finance? Who do you market to? How does the scripts? How does all that work? When, and then once you have the properties, how do you make money? When, when you were talking about uh, two thousand nine, two thousand ten, yeah. that that you wish you would have bought three hundred properties I more back, back then. Time. Yeah, so so that I thought the same when you mentioned that comment. I was like, man, if I knew what I knew today back then, because now I understand how all these guys were buying properties and owner financing them out and wrapping them, and and today they're freaking gazillionaires because I look, I look at stuff we wholesaled and, and I have buddies that I worked with at the time, and we'll get together and it's like you think we were the the four poorest guys on earth, we're like man, we wholesaled that for seven seven thousand dollars and yep. sold for two hundred. And we're the, the, the most miserable four people on earth when we start talking about that. Yeah. Um, my friends, Randy Shelley, Thomas, Justin Huggins. I met Randy. Yeah, Randy's a great guy. Uh, he was one of our first uh, partners in Chattanooga that we worked with. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't wish a recession on anybody. Um, but the next time the next one comes around, I, if, I don't care if about he, 70, if he, we are going to buy some properties. If it's coming like that, um I don't think we'll have this. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Correction. There'll be some sort of correction. I don't even know that it's going to be soon. No, no, no. I don't think it's going to be soon. I think it could be 18 months or two years away. No, probably longer than that, man. Right now, they're pumping so much money into the market. You got NFTs coming out. You got all these new stuff that I don't even understand. (laughs) Uh, I put 20 grand in an NFT with Brad that I don't even understand. The metaverse, you know, like, what is that? You know, Q the other day was talking about flipping uh, properties and and getting hard money to fund. Purchases. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Like, that's uh, it's so much. I don't. To I don't me, that's it. way too too advanced right now. Yeah. Uh, I will understand it at some point, uh, but I got other priorities right now. Yeah, uh, I got I got brick and mortar stuff to address. Yeah, brick and mortar stuff that I gotta address. It's that fascinating though. Yeah, it is. It is because that's a new world. You know, they they just created a whole new universe. Like, what the hell? Like, I was thinking about that this morning. I, was like, I guess Mark Zuckerberg just got up one morning and said. I will create a new universe, and boom. Well, but maybe t- for us, like we're like, oh, this is like stupid Sims, uh, you know, simulation. But you know, you saw that like Ready Player One, where they do the virtual, like they're in the world. Like maybe that's where it heads. I don't know. I mean, who knows where where it goes? I guess we're gonna put that on the on the. On, we're gonna table that one, and we'll talk about it next time. We'll see you around. Don't forget to hit share, like, and subscribe, guys. Go follow David Olds in, on Instagram. Look him up, and and uh, David Olds REI. David Olds REI and on Facebook and click on the link down below for Dispo Exposed if you want to learn how to dispositions properties like a pro nationwide. I'll see you in the next one.